Though plants are living things, or living organisms, they grow in the soil and remain fixed at a place through their roots. Plants do not move around like animals do. Plants also do not take food like animals. The plants make their own food by the process of photosynthesis. Plants are of different shapes and sizes. Some plants are very big, some are medium-sized, some are small whereas some are just patches of green material on the soil. Most of the plants have green leaves. A few plants have reddish leaves. Most of the plants bear flowers. They are called flowering plants. Some of the examples of flowering plants are rose, mango, neem, bougainvillea, mustard, sunflower plant, grass, lemon, wheat, maj, chili, tomato, tulsi, people, bunion, banana, sugarcane, and potato. Some of the plants, however, do not bear flowers. They are called non-flowering plants or flowerless plants. Some of the examples of non-flowering plants are ferns, moss, algae, fungi, like mushroom, and conifers, like pine trees. Most of the plants can be classified into three main groups, herbs, shrubs and trees, on the basis of their size, nature of stem and lifespan. So, plants may be herbs, shrubs or trees. Herbs Herbs are small plants having a soft and delicate stem. Herbs do not have woody stem. They are non-woody plants. Herbs have a green and tender stem. We can easily bend the stem of a herb. Herbs are short-sized plants. Herbs usually do not grow more than one meter in height. Herbs have a short lifespan. They may live for only one or two seasons. Some of the examples of herbs are tomato, mustard, radish, sunflower, wheat, paddy, rice, cabbage, carrot, ginger and tumip. Though the stems of herbs are soft and delicate but they are strong enough to stand erect on their own. Shrubs Shrubs are medium-sized plants with a hard and woody stem, branching out near the base. Though the stem of a shrub is hard but it is not very thick. Actually, shrubs do not have a distinct main stem or trunk. Shrubs tend to branch near ground level, so many branches are seen rising just above the ground, giving them a bushy appearance. Some of the examples of shrubs are rose, jasmine, chameli, croton, tulsi, bougainvillea, china rose, shufla, pomegranate, henna, mehundi, and lemon. The shrubs are bigger than herbs but smaller than trees. The lifespan of shrubs is for many years but it is less than that of trees. Trees Trees are tall and big plants with hard and thick woody stem. The trees have one main stem called trunk, which usually gives out branches and leaves. The branches in a tree appear higher up on the stem, much above the ground. Some of the examples of trees are neem, mango, palm, teak, oak, sandalwood, coconut, eucalyptus, bunion, bargad, and jamun. Palm trees are never branched. The coconut tree is a type of palm tree. The trees are very big in size. The lifespan of trees is very large. Trees usually live for many, many years. Shrubs and trees are both woody plants. The main differences between shrubs and trees are the following. Shrubs are medium-sized plants whereas trees are very tall and big plants. Shrubs branch near the ground whereas trees branch much above the ground. Shrubs have thin stem whereas trees have thick stem. Climbers A plant having thin, long and weak stem which cannot stand upright but readily climbs up a neighboring support, like a fence, or a tree is called a climber, or climber plant. A climber plant has special organs for climbing called tendrils. Some climber plants have stem tendrils whereas others have leaf tendrils. The tendrils of climber plants wind themselves around any neighboring object and help the plant to climb up. Some of the examples of climbers or climber plants are pea plant, bitter gourd, karela, sweet gourd, mikakadu, bottle gourd, loki, 
grape wine, passion fleur and glory lily all these plants have various types of tendrils in them. Creepers. A plant having thin, long and weak stem which cannot stand upright and spreads on the ground, is called a creeper, or creeper plant. A creeper plant has no climbing organs like tendrils, which are present in climber plants. A creeper grows along the ground or other surfaces by extending long shoots, or branches. The two important creepers, or creeper plants, are, strawberry plant and money plant. If a creeper plant is to be grown like a climber plant, then the top end of its stem has to be tied with a string and the other end of string fixed at a height. The main difference between the climber plants and creeper plants is that climber plants have climbing organs like tendrils, on their stems or leaves, but creeper plants have no such climbing organs. Parts of a plant Plants are the living things, or living organisms. Each plant has many parts to perform various functions for its survival. The main parts of a plant are, roots, stem, branches, leaves, flowers and fruit. Each part of the plant performs a specific function. That part of a plant which is below the ground, in the soil, is called root. The roots of a plant perform a number of functions. The main functions of the roots of a plant are, roots anchor the plant to the soil. It means that roots fix the plant firmly to the soil, or ground. This prevents the plant from being pulled out easily or blown away by the wind. Roots absorb water and minerals from the soil. These are needed for the manufacture of food by plant leaves. Roots help in holding the soil together. In this way, roots prevent the soil from being blown away by wind or washed away by water, and help in the conservation of soil. Types of root roots are mainly of two types. 1. Tap roots, and 2. Fibrous roots. Tap root. Tap root is a straight tapering root which grows vertically down into the soil and gives out branches on all the sides. Tap root is the main root and the smaller, side roots are called lateral roots. Please note that tap root itself is quite thick but its branches, lateral roots, are much thinner. Some of the plants having tap roots are, pea plant, neem tree, mango tree, marigold, tulsi, gram, carrot, radish, beet, and turnip. Fibrous roots Some plants do not have a main root. They have a bunch of similar roots called fibrous roots. The fibrous roots consist of many thin, fiber-like roots of a similar size. The fibrous roots spread out in the soil and give a firm support to the plant. Some of the plants having fibrous roots are wheat, paddy, rice, grass, maj, millet, bajra, bamboo, sugarcane and sweet potato. Stem The part of a plant which rises vertically up from the ground is called its stem. The stem supports the branches and leaves. The stem of a plant is the link between the roots and the rest of the plant. The stems of most of the plants are quite strong and can stand erect on their own. So, in most cases, the stem holds the plant upright. The stems of some of the plants are, however, weak and cannot stand erect. The stem of a tree is the strongest part of the tree and it is known as trunk. Most of the tree trunks are covered with a tough layer called bark. Bark protects the inner parts of a tree. The main functions of the stem of a plant are the stem holds the plant upright or erect. The stem of a plant carries water and minerals from the roots to the leaves and other parts of the plant. The stem carries the prepared food from the leaves to other parts of the plant. The stem holds the leaves in such a way that the leaves are able to get plenty of sunlight for preparing food by photosynthesis. Leaf The leaf is a thin, broad, flat and green part of a plant which is attached to the stem, or branch. The plural of, leaf, is, leaves. A plant has a large number of leaves. Leaves of different plants have different shapes and sizes, but all of them have the same basic structure. A leaf consists mainly of two parts, lamina and petiole. Lamina is commonly known as leaf blade and petiole is commonly known as leaf stalk. 
The broad, green part of the leaf is called lamina. The thin stalk with which leaf is attached to the stem, or branch, is called petiole. There is a midrib, main vein, in the center of lamina, or leaf blade. A large number of veins spread out from the midrib to all the parts of the leaf. The midrib and veins consist of bundles of tiny tubes some of which carry water and dissolved minerals into the leaf and others carry away the food from the leaf. There are minute pores on the surface of a leaf which are called stomata. Stomata are so small that we cannot see them with naked eyes. The stomata allow the gases to move in and out of the leaf. They also allow excess water vapor to go out of the leaf. The leaves of plants contain a green-colored pigment called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll imparts green color to the leaves. Chlorophyll can absorb or trap energy from sunlight. The leaves make food for the plant by photosynthesis. The leaves get rid of excess water from the plant through transpiration. The leaves carry out the process of respiration in plant. Venation. All the leaves contain veins. The arrangement of veins in the leaves of various plants is different. The arrangement of veins in the lamina, or leaf blade, is known as venation of the leaf. There are two main types of venation, or vein arrangements, in the leaves. These are, reticulate venation, and parallel venation. In reticulate venation, the veins in a leaf occur in an irregular way forming a net-like design. The term, reticulate means, resembling a net or network. In reticulate venation, the veins spread out from the midrib to all the parts of the leaf haphazardly, giving the appearance of a net. The examples of plants having reticulate venation in their leaves are, pea plant, neem tree, mango tree, marigold, tulsi, mustard, sunflower, orange, guava, pulses, tamarind, rose, China rose, coriander, dunya, and pepal. Parallel venation. In parallel venation, the veins in a leaf run parallel to one another on both the sides of the midrib. The examples of plants having parallel venation in their leaves are wheat, paddy, rice, maj, millet, bajra, sugarcane, bamboo, barley, lily, and banana. Flowers. Flowers are perhaps the most beautiful part of a plant. Different plants have different types of flowers. Flowers are of many sizes, shapes and colors. The flower is that part of a plant which contains the reproductive organs. The main function of flowers is to produce fruits and seeds. All the flowers have the same basic parts. Parts of a flower. The main parts of a flower are sepals, petals, stamen and pistil. The green, leaf-like parts in the outermost circle of a flower are called sepals. The sepals protect the flower when it is in the form of a bud in the initial stage. Sepals may either be separate from one another or joined together. Inside the sepals are the petals of a flower. Petals are the most attractive part of a flower. Petals of flowers can be of different colors, shapes and sizes. The petals can be red, blue, green, orange, pink, white, or any other color. The petals of some of the flowers have natural scents in them due to which they smell very nice. Petals also attract insects. The ring of colorful petals in a flower protects the reproductive organs of the flower, like stamen and pistil. Just inside the petals of a flower, there are many little stalks with swollen tops. These stalks with swollen tops are called stamen. The stamen is the male part of a flower. The stamen is actually made up of two parts, a filament and an anther. The stalk of stamen is called filament and the swollen top of stamen is called anther. The anther contains a yellow powder-like substance called pollen, or pollen grains. If we cut the anther of a flower horizontally with a blade, we can see the pollen grains in it. The pollen grains contain male sex cells of a plant. There are many stamens in a flower. They form a ring around the female part of the flower called pistil. In the center of a flower, there is a flask-shaped organ. 
This flask-shaped organ of a fleur is called pistil. The pistil is the female part of a fleur. A pistil is made up of three parts, stigma, style and ovary. The top part of a pistil is called stigma. Fruits and seeds. A fruit is that part of a plant which contains the seeds. Apples, oranges, plums, lemons, and tomatoes are all fruits. They all have seeds inside them. The pea pod is also a fruit. The peas inside it are seeds. The fruits and seeds are formed from flowers by the process of pollination and fertilization. The transfer of pollen grains from anther of a stamen to the stigma of a pistil is called pollination. Pollination is done by insects, wind and water. In other words, the pollen grains are carried from the anther of a stamen to the stigma of a pistil by insects, like bees, blowing wind, and falling water. When the pollen grains fall on stigma, they move down through the tube called style and reach the ovary. In the ovary, the male sex cells present in pollens join with the female sex cells present in ovules. The joining together of male and female sex cells is called fertilization. After fertilization, the ovules grow and become seeds. The ovary of fleur grows and becomes a fruit, with seeds inside it. A fruit protects the seeds. The other parts of the fleur dry up and fall off.